K Coke, welcome to Vlad TV. Respect, bro. Yo, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, I had to look it up so I got the right date. But you're actually the first rapper from the UK to get a video featured on Vlad TV. This was in January of 2011. Yeah, that's early still. Yeah. What, January? Yeah. I, just signed, I just signed a deal. That's right. It was, it was off that deal with Rock Nation and uh, you dropped Are You Alone? And, uh, you know, I, I got it right away. Like, when I, when I heard the song and I saw the imaging, I'm like, okay, I see what Jay-Z's up to with this. Okay. <laughs> you know? Congratulations, though, man. You're definitely one of the OGs in this. Nah, for sure. Respect. I appreciate that, man. No doubt. So, you grew up in Northwest London. Yeah, Stonebridge. Stonebridge. Tell me a little bit about Stonebridge, because Stonebridge kind of has an interesting reputation. What, what do you want me to tell you exactly, like? Well, I mean, it's considered one of the rougher areas in London. Yeah, Why is that? for sure. Um, yeah, I, I believe it was that growing up. For sure. Okay. And what makes that area so rough? Is it is it the economic it, situation around it? I, um, to be fair, I just, it was it was the way I think personally the way it was built, the like, the flats, the way it looked. I think um, there was a lot of stuff that happened there. Police couldn't really go through there. It was just it was just one of those places you just couldn't go. What do you mean by police couldn't really go through there? Cause like the way the the way the the whole estate was set up, like you used to have all these blocks that connected to each other, and like it was just like police couldn't really get to nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's just about every block connected to every block, so I could literally walk from from one side of the estate to the other side of the estate without touching the floor, just going through the blocks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it used to be one now, of those kind of joints. Now, I mean, you talked about you had a, an interview with, uh, with The Standard. Yeah. And you said you, you've been shot at a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how old were you when you first got shot at? Bro, probably about 15, 16. Okay. And, you know, what a lot of people may not realize in the U.S. is that there is no right to bear arms in the U.K. No, no, no. It's so illegal over here. It's completely, it's completely legal. Yeah, completely. So the fact that you have a gun at all already means that you're you're facing all types of you know Charges, jail time. Of course, yeah. Okay, so you were shot at a bunch of times. Now your brother got shot. Yeah. Uh, how old how old were you when that actually happened? Um, I think I might have been what twenty, maybe twenty one. My brother's 10 months younger than me. He was probably like 20. Okay. We were standing up together on the side of the road. We, we both got shot at. He just ended up getting one out of it, you know? Oh, so both of you were shot at and yeah, like he, he actually hit. got hit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where did he get hit? Um, it's just like in his leg, like lower, upper leg still. It's still the bullet's still lodged in him now. They couldn't take it wow. out. Okay. So... Was that the first time you actually saw someone get shot in front of you? Nah, nah, nah. Okay, so so you're you're almost used to this. Yeah, for sure. Okay, then your little cousin gets murdered. Yeah, that's that. That wasn't too long ago, though. To be fair, Were you talking about my little cousin that got stabbed, stabbed I think to death. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That wasn't too long ago. That was like a, what five years ago now. Yeah. Okay. He got he got he basically got stabbed to death. His dad was trying to save him and ended up getting stabbed in the process too. And obviously the dad came through and the son didn't make it, you know? I mean, growing up in an environment like this. Yeah. You know, you're talking about how your your cousin got, I mean, sorry, your brother gets shot right there next to you. But you've been witness to a bunch of other shootings. Yeah. Why, why stay in this area when, when, you know, at any moment it could be your last day? Bro, it's not, it's not out of choice. <laughs> Man ain't there out of choice. Man's there because man's got nowhere else to go. It's only it's only till man started doing certain things that man started when man was able to. Do you get what I'm saying? But before that, man stuck there. We ain't got nowhere to to go. Where are we gonna go? Well, you could always move to another area. How? What area? How do we move? See, it's not as easy so as that. You can't just saying, get up and go. Okay. It's not as easy as that. So you're telling me that that you're so broke that you have no choice but to stay in that area. Yeah, man was so broke that man had cho no choice but to stay there, for sure. It's sad. It's, it's sad life. being in that type of situation. 
yeah, that's that's what it was growing up. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how it is in the UK, but yeah. but in America, I mean, even if you're on welfare, you know, and I have I have close close friends, you know, that, that have gone through this where. You know, you could even be on welfare in one area, but you could petition to move to a to a different area and still get on welfare. That's in true, area. still, but yeah, I'd rather be around the shit that I know than the shit I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so like, you're saying that if you move into another area, it might actually be more dangerous of than course. where you are already. Yeah, of course. At, at least here, I know everybody here. I'm comfortable here. I know I know what's going on here. If I move to a different area, it's probably the same shit, but I just don't know everybody there. So it's you get what I'm saying. Poor people can't. Poor people would have to move to another poor area. It's probably going to be the same circumstances in that area. So I'd rather be around the shit I know than the shit I don't know. You feel me? If that I makes understand. sense. Yeah. Now, before you started rapping, you know, you're talking about all these different situations. Have you gotten arrested before then? Yeah. Okay. A few times. Yeah, lots. Lots. What was the longest stretch that you actually did? Nah, I'm. I'm. What do you mean? The longest time I done in jail? Yeah. Yeah, nah, I, I, I've I been jailed like four times, but nothing, like nothing for too long. Like the longest time I done was that attempted murder trial. Okay, and that came later on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so before you started rapping, you were getting arrested, but it was just in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so at what point did you say, okay, I'm going to start rapping and I'm going to start taking it serious? Um, Basically, we started, we started fucking around when we was like, I say about 21. Couple of my brethren from the estate started making songs, and I and I and and they would, it was just talking about man's life, and it was just fun, innit? So after I started doing that, and people started to like it, that's when I started to take it serious. Okay, and was your name K Coke in the beginning, or yeah, did you have other start. names? It's been K Coke from the start. Okay, uh, why K Coke? Lots of reasons. <laughs> one, one come white, and I spit that. Another, cause I was one of the only kids on the block that used to sell that. Okay, so you just came up with a K Coke name for sure, but based on those multiple reasons for sure. Okay, you start rapping, and you know, everyone, you know, most kids who are into hip hop, they they try to rap. Yeah. At, at a certain point, you know, even me, I I try to, you know, my hand of <laughs> rapping back in the day, and I I realized I was whack, and I gave it up, <laughs> but. <laughs> At what point did you realize, you know something, I may be on to something here? Um, yeah, quite early on still. Like when we first started messing around with all the mandem and that, like n when, when rap first came out over here, lots of my friends, they used to rap in an American accent and, and people weren't really feeling that. But when I started rapping, I was British, innit? My accent was my accent, so I standed out a lot more. Plus I was white and... I've kind of probably got a lot more attention than the other because of what I was talking and because of my history was actually real. So because of all of those factors, people just took a liking to me more, which gave me the, you get what I'm saying? Which made me just know that I'm, I'm all right at this thing, you know what I'm saying? Back then, were there, you know, I guess you call them road, road rap, ra road yeah. rappers, road rap, you know, but I guess the, the equivalent of the US is gangster rap. Yeah, of course. Cool. Same thing though. Yeah. Yeah. So. Were there any others, any other artists in the UK really doing gangster rap back then? Well, at the time that I started, yeah, yeah um, couple like PDC, PDC were one of the first to do it. Obviously, I think Gigs and that were doing their thing. Um, North Star were doing their thing, and mm -hmm. yeah, and other than that, um, Mash Town. But yeah, other than other than those kind of names, it weren't really popping like that back then. You genuinely, genuinely had to be what you was rapping about for people to take you serious. You get what I'm saying? Like, now it's a little bit different, I think. Right, well, out of the rapper, out of the different rappers you mentioned, you know, Giggs, I know. We did yeah. a big interview with Giggs yeah. when I was in the UK. The, the other rappers I'm not completely familiar with, but are any of them, are they all black or are any of them white? Nah, yeah, they're all black. Okay, so you were the first white gangster rapper. Yeah, for sure, 100. Okay. And how are people reacting to it? Because when you listen to the lyrics, you sense the authenticity, but, you know, people will always kind of question you when you're white and hip-hop. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. When, when, people, when people do their homework on me and they do their research, that's what I'm saying. I came from the road. I'm like, I was famous before I done rap. Like, I was known on the roads before I done rap. Before I started rapping, 
I was already established as a as a road person. Do you get what I'm saying? So when right. people when people hear me talking, they know that what I'm talking about is is official. Okay. So the song Are You Alone? Yeah. Did that come before or after the whole Jay-Z thing? That was way before. Way before. So yeah. you dropped that song on your own independently. Yeah. Okay. And did the video and everything also? Yeah, of course. Okay. So that song, from what I understand, there is a, a whole bunch of truth behind that song. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what's the story behind Are You Alone? Um, basically, Are You Alone was just about one of my OGs that kind of, he kind of raised, man. He was, he was actually super on stuff, a very well-known person on the road as well. And like, obviously, we used to kick it with him hard. You get what I'm saying? And then obviously some, some shit went down and like he just told on the whole hood, like, he wrote a 4,000 page statement. He was like one of the first black on black super grasses ever. It was all established on the newspapers and all of that kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, that's where that song came from. Okay, so what did you say, black on black super grass? Yeah, obviously there's a lot of black on black crime out here, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. so he was like one of the first from that kind of, that kind of whatever you want to call it. He was one of the first to, to go all out on the snitching thing. So he wrote 4,000 pages. 4,000 page statement, bro. It's bigger than the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically told on everyone he ever met. More or less, yeah. And how many people ended up going to jail over that? Um, a good couple of people going to jail. I got bridgings in there right now because of him. So 10, 20, 50? Nah, I wouldn't say that much, but he made a lot of people like and in the end it worked out to be that a lot of his evidence wasn't wasn't good cuz he 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 was um, made out to be a liar in certain things and but he made a lot of people end up catching cases and going to court some people are in jail because of him some people beat their cases because of him you know what i'm saying so okay and for him doing that he ended up walking away free nah he had to he, he would have ended up getting a 18 years he got his 18 down to a 4 Okay, so he did his four years. And he's on the road somewhere, running around, a new identity. Okay, so I assume he didn't go back to the neighborhood. Of course not, come on. <laughs> okay, so then you made a song about him. Um, yeah, I made, I made the song like straight away. Like as soon as man realized that he was doing the mad thing, like I had to set that straight, like immediately. You get what I'm saying? Okay, did you actually mention his name in the song? Nah, nah, I don't mention his real name. Okay. So, you you came out with this song. Now, your first mixtape, Pure Coke, Volume, volume one, one, was yeah. that before or after? That was that was around, that was, I, the, the mixtape come out just after the song. Okay. And that, that mixtape ended up selling 10,000 copies. Yeah. And you just put that out yourself? Yeah, yeah. We we got, the, we pressed up the, the CDs ourselves and we done all of that ourselves and shot them, yeah. Okay, once once you came out and you started seeing the the response to this first mixtape and the song, like what what started to change? Everything, literally. Like once once Pure Coke Volume One come out, it was like I was officially like a UK rapper. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like officially, like the the whole of England was bumping me at a stage. There's no doubt about it. Even Canada, Canada been fucking with me hard from the beginning, bro. I mean, how did that feel to come out of the hood to be so broke that you had to, you know, you couldn't move out of this, this dangerous area and suddenly everyone's checking your story? Yeah, no, it's mad. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling, same time. Okay. So it's, it's always a wonderful feeling to be doing positive things. Absolutely. Mm. Now, the fire in the booth freestyle, did that happen after the mixtape? or? Yeah, or that, happened, that right? happened just after the mixtape was out. So obviously... Them times there, man wasn't playing on radio. No UK road rappers or none of that stuff existed on radio out here. None of it at all. Like, so obviously after Pure Coke one came out, like people were like UK rap was coming up. You get what I'm saying? And then that fire in the booth was actually my first time ever on radio, like on proper radio. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So at this point, did the money start coming in? Did you start getting paid shows and so forth? Nah, not really. Man weren't doing shows back then and man weren't really getting paid like that, bro. 
It weren't, it weren't really happening like that. Man was just established, but not really getting paid. So you basically, you're getting all this acclaim and then you're going back to your old neighborhood. Of and course, and still do, doing the having, same having stuff do that man's been doing, yeah. I'm just famous now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did that make it more difficult? Because, I mean, I, I know personally that when you start doing what, you know, better than the people around you, you start getting a certain level of hate that you just mm. weren't prepared for. Nah, to be fair, bro, like, like I was, I'm 30 in my hood, bro. I always have been like I got like man's official man never really had those problems I got real dogs and real people that love man and and will go to the ends of the earth for man and it's always been like that do you know what I'm saying Yeah I mean your friends may be like this but what about all the people that aren't as close to you I don't know man I like I I I didn't really feel it then still I was flying bro I didn't really I weren't really penny and nothing else in it no nothing nothing really any situation that came to me got dealt with, so it was cool, bro. At what point did the whole Jay-Z thing come around? I must have been like one of the only guys around that time that was actually killing the place with videos and just consistency. So when they come over here and they're looking to, to find out what's happening, my name's the one ringing, isn't it? And obviously, yeah, it just went from there kind of thing. Okay, so then it was what, Ty Ty who approached you first? Yeah. Okay. And what was that first conversation like? <laughs> um, I was sitting outside the Stonebridge pub still and I, I was talking to Tai Tai on the phone. Obviously, I had another situation pending and um, he Tai Tai heard about it, but he was just talking to me on the phone. He was just like, listen, kid, like, don't sign nothing. I'm coming out there. We're going to have a conversation. And when I get out there, we'll talk. I was like, cool. Waited for him to come out two weeks later. We sat down, had the conversation, and then everything just went from there. Okay. And, you know, Rock Nation... Back then, I mean, it was still Jay Z, but it's not the Rock Nation of today. Of it course. wasn't nearly, nearly as big. I mean, was I think Jay Z was just kind of starting it during that time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they were still getting their feet wet. So Ty Ty talks to you, then he comes out and meets with you. Yeah. Okay. And what happens next? Nothing. He just he, he's he's on stuff. He wants to sign me. Um, he's got a. There was another situation in place where there was a record label over here, Sony RCA who were also interested in me. So Tai Tai ended up merging the two together and then it had Rock Nation and Sony RCA and then they came together to, to help me do my thing. Okay. Yeah. So you ended up signing that deal? Yeah. You were how old at the time? Uh, 26. So at 26, you signed a deal with the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah. Unthinkable for a UK artist at the... At, at, those times. Okay. Now, did you meet with Jay-Z before the signing? Nah. Okay. But you met with him after the signing? Yeah, once. At the Watch once. the Throne tour, yeah. Okay. So, you signed a Rock Nation slash Sony. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to get into your financial business, but was it financially mm -hmm. lucrative for you? Um, I signed for like 100 bags. Over here, that's kind of, it's all right, I guess. At the time, for a UK rapper, it was kind of good money, six figures. Steve right, a hundred, a hundred pounds, a hundred thousand pounds, about two hundred fifty thousand US. Yeah, it's not that great, but at that time it was. I guess it was good. Quarter million, not not bad, not bad, but not not retirement money. No way. <laughs> okay, and, and I mean, I don't know how the deal works, but you don't always get this money up front. This is something that's budgeted you yeah. know, for your project and yeah, so forth. Kind of, I get like a, I got a, a, a bunch. I got like a quarter of it up front. And then the rest of it was just like a month, every other month, like here, here, here kind of thing until it was, you know? Okay. So so you sign, you sign this deal. What starts to change once you're now part of Rock Nation? Um, what do you mean, though? Well, I mean, does Rock Nation start to get behind you? Do they start putting you in studios, connecting yeah, with to, artists, to putting be you fair, on promo? Like, to be fair, yeah, Tai Tai was giving man maximum support, you know, and I respect him and always will for that, you get me? But there were just a lot of factors that were going on around me and you get what I'm saying? Like the whole police situation and the stuff on road was catching up and it was just all of that kind of stuff was going on, you know? You signed a Rock Nation. Yeah. And then what, six months later? Nah, three months later. Three months later? Four months later, sorry. April the 1st. 
you're on top of the world. Yeah. You're the first UK rapper to sign with Jay-Z. <laughs> and tell me what happens after four months. I get nicked for attempted murder. That's it, literally. No bail on remand till trial. So you get charged with killing a 28-year-old... Nah, not killing. Football. He didn't die. He got shot. Oh, he, in, oh, shooting, shooting. Yeah, he got shot in broad daylight in a train station. Okay, this was a, a soccer player or a footballer, I guess. He wasn't a professional soccer player. No, he was playing football, no. but he wasn't a proper soccer player. Okay, so this is just a, a, regular, a regular guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets shot in broad daylight at a train station. In Stonebridge. And they... In Stonebridge, your your neighborhood, yeah, and and someone said that you did it, yeah. Basically, yeah, there was um, some camera footage of the incident, and then on the camera footage they had these stills of the people that were involved. Um, two police officers, two police local police officers said that one of those stills looked like me. So basically, that was the basis that I went to jail on. So no one actually said K Coke did it. Nah, nah, no one said that. The police said that. The po the police said that based on a picture. Yeah, that that didn't even stand up in court. Okay. Now I assume, you know, once once you went through the discovery and everything, you get to find out who these police officers are. Of course. Now are these two cops that you knew personally that may have had a grudge? Yeah, of course they know me, innit? I, I'm like I said, I'm well known on this state. Lived there my whole life. They know who I am, innit? And obviously that's why they went to these police officers because these police officers were local police officers, so they wanted to know if they recognize anybody in these in in these pictures. And obviously the the two police officers are saying that that they 100% believe that that's me. Have you had bad situations with these particular cops before? Um, I'm not sure still. It's possible. I used to get into problems with police all the time. I got um, fighting with feds on my record and all kinds of things. like. So it's possible. Who knows? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so, I mean, I, I know how it is in the U.S. Like, police, it's like a blue wall of silence is what they call it. Like, yeah. police will stick up for other police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so do you think there was a certain degree of, okay, this guy may have beat up one of our brothers, so we're going to get back at him? Do you know what it is, yeah? Like, I genuinely believe that, because obviously my, house, my, my yard used to get kicked off all the time, my door. Literally, my door would get booted off all the time. Feds were on, man like unconditionally all the time when do you get what I'm saying it was that bad like um I don't know if there was a grudge or well I believe that they knew it wasn't me I believe that I genuinely believe they knew it wasn't me I genuinely believe they just wanted to slow me down or or just make me suffer for past things that's what I believe still okay and your door is getting kicked down by the feds all the time yeah by the police all the time yeah, yeah it got to a stage it was so bad the the council wouldn't even fix our door no more <laughs> real talk you just <laughs> real talk they go kick it down anyways let's just <laughs> real talk it's, it's just gonna come down again isn't it okay and you actually got into fights with the police yeah of course i got i got an assault on a pc on my um record i got beat up by the police and they done me for assault but okay. it's on the record they all, all the feds come to court they all lied they all said that i did this and i did that and then there's me one saying no i didn't judge wasn't hearing a thing now i've got a sort on a PC, you know? Okay. So now th the shooting happened. You just got this deal from Jay-Z and you're sitting in a cage trying to figure out if, you, if you're going to get out of this or not. Now, yeah. you know you didn't do it, but sometimes in court it doesn't matter. Bro, they made it look like it was me, bro. Because obviously, like, I'm from the area as well. So, like, where it happened, my house is literally around the corner. So my phone is in the area. It's, I know that I just, it, it, they made it look like it was me. Do you get what I'm saying? Without saying too much. Okay. So you're in jail for how long until the trial starts? Eight months. And there's an actual trial? Yeah. So for eight months. So twice as long as you've been signed, you're actually in a cage, in, yeah. in a cell. Yeah. Now, there's a, I mean, I guess in the UK, there's a whole court appointed lawyer thing that happens where you don't have to spend your own money to protect yourself. Is that, is that true or? Yeah. Yeah, you okay. get, we get um, legal aid.
out here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you actually can get a, a fairly good lawyer without having to pay for it. For sure. Okay, which is which is very different because in the U.S., if you're poor, if, if, you get a court, a court appointed lawyer. You're in trouble, and, and you're probably going to jail. I hear that. Yeah, it happens all the time. It's actually a very that. sad, I sad way that. of doing, you know, of doing the court system. So you get a good lawyer, and now, I'm not sure how it works in the U.K., but was there like a plea deal ahead of time where it's like, okay, listen, just ad- admit that you did this, and we'll give you a smaller amount of time, or no? No. no. No plea deal, no nothing. I was just, I'm innocent, innit? I'm fighting this case, bro. No, I understand you're innocent, but did they offer you a plea deal? Nah, nah, nah. I, not that I remember. Okay. So, but so you actually have to go to court with a jury and everything else like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it in the courtroom that allowed you to walk free? Um, their evidence. There was no evidence. They've got no evidence to prove that this had anything to do with me. Literally. But they had a... They had pictures that they said. It's not a, the picture's not good enough. You can't see facial features. You can't see nothing really. They had experts come in, assess the picture. The picture's rubbish. You can't see nothing. Do you get what I'm saying? Now I guess that there were phone records that said that you were at your grandparents' house at the time. Yeah. Which I was. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that the? Um, that the district attorney or whatever you call him over there decided to take on a case like this with such flimsy evidence? Um, I think I was just collateral damage, innit? They had who they, they had the people they thought they had and I was just collateral damage. I'm making a lot of noise right now. I'm doing positive things. I'm probably going to take the hood to a place it hasn't been before. I don't think they like that. They just, they're trying to, they just want to shut it down, innit? So was anyone else charged for this shooting outside of you? Yeah, yeah. People were found guilty for it. Oh, so the person who did the shooting, or the person allegedly who, who did the shooting, actually got convicted for the there, shooting? There was people that got found guilty for that trial, yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. And, and what happened? Did they end up... They, 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 they got time. Okay. How did it feel when, when they said you were not guilty? I was just relieved, bro. Just wanted to go home, man. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Because like I said, I mean, you knew you didn't do it, but then again, yeah. you never know and what happens. And to be fair, yeah, like, to be fair, if I, if I didn't have the situation going on, it would have been a little bit, I would have been easier with it. But because I had so much going on, like such a big opportunity, it, it really got to me a bit. You know what I'm saying? Right, because your momentum got slowed down, obviously. Of course. Like, I just had, like, this is the biggest opportunity of my life. I could change my whole family's life right now. But instead, I'm sitting down in jail for something I didn't even do. So now you get out of jail. Yeah. And some things have changed with your label situation. Yeah. So tell me what happens. Yeah, basically, um, the guy that signed me to Sony originally, he ended up getting fired. And then... Sony had a new MD come in and they were just stripping the whole label down, literally. And then they weren't sure if they was going to keep me or not. And then Tai Tai took me in back into Sony and saying, listen, if you lot ain't going to keep him, we're just going to take him somewhere else. So anyway, they ended up saying, cool, we'll run with it. But it was just like, make a single, make a single. Rather than sit down and make an album and then pick the singles, it was just like, make a single. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that was kind of what happened. Okay, and I guess they tried to put you with Rita Ora? Yeah. And this was, this was still early, I guess. So she was the other UK signee to rock. Yeah, Nation. obviously, um, Re- while I was in jail, Rita blew up. While I was sitting down in jail, Rita was just, she blew up. She got like three number ones. It was, she went off. You okay. And the name of the single you had with Rita was? Lay Down Your Weapons. Okay. What was it like <laughs> to come from, you know, your whole stance is you know, you're on some road shit. Yeah. And they want you to come out with a song that seems to kind of go against your body of work. For sure. For me, yeah, um, I didn't really like the record at first. I didn't. I still don't like the record now. But when you got a man like Ty Ty telling you that that's the record, kid, and it, if that's the one, and then you got radio saying, yeah, this is the one, and then everyone else is saying this is the one, you're like, all right, cool, I'm going to make it work. So I just tried to do the best I could with the record, you get what I'm saying? And I literally, 
I didn't say I laid down mine. I didn't say I'm literally giving the kids advice. That's what that record's about. Don't follow me in it. Don't don't go down the path I went down in it because this is what happens and that's what lay down your weapons was. That was the best I could do with it. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> but you still didn't like it. Nah, I didn't like it. Okay. How did the song do? Um, it charted top twenty, number seventeen in the charts. Okay, so that was like your biggest song at that point. In yeah. A way. yeah. In terms of radio songs. Of course. If I had Rita the way I wanted Rita, I reckon I probably would have got a number one. Okay. So, and then at one point you end up meeting Jay-Z in the, the Watch the Throne tour. Yeah, yeah. That was just before the single come out, I think. Okay. And what was that conversation like with Jay-Z? Yeah, like he was just all love. It was, it was brief, very brief. You get me? He just come, congratulated me and just told me like I got my chance and to make the most of it. Yeah. yeah, very humble guy, and it was it was love, innit? Now, did you meet Kanye during this time also? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I did still. <laughs> I think there's a story behind this. Nah, not really. I just think I thought Kanye was just kind of rude and ignorant. I, I must have. Um, they must have been over here. But they had some hotel rented out and whatnot. So Jay Z's managers took me in to go meet Kanye and them. I've gone in there. So like he's getting his hair cut, but there's bare people in there. It's just there's like 50 people in this room, but we're all in there. But um, Jay Z's managers introduced me to Kanye. Like, yo, this is the new kid. Rare, rare. He just looked at me. He's like, what? You rap, right? I'm like, yeah, I rap. He's like, you're a rapper, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He's like, there's rappers everywhere, man. I was just looking at him like, yeah, all right, then cool, bro. <laughs> Whatever in it. But it was just, it was just. I just thought he was. He went. He went really. I didn't really feel him still when I met him. Wait, he he says there's rappers everywhere. Yeah, I just didn't get it. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, but when I looked around, there's Pusha T's in the room, Big Sean's in the room, there's Bear Man in the room. You get what I'm saying? But I I didn't get what he was trying to say or what that comment was about. I was just looking at him like, all right, cool, bro, whatever, innit? You get me? Yeah, I mean, you know, I had my own Kanye moment a while back. I feel you. <laughs> I think everyone who meets Kanye usually has a Kanye story to go along with it. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, he's, he's one of those out there kind of guys, isn't it? He is. Okay, so the single comes out and, and it charts. Yeah. What, what starts to happen next? Bro, not much, bro. Feds, isn't it? They're just stopping all my shows. Like literally, like I'm banned from performing in London. Like I can't perform in London. If you try and book me for a show in London, the show's shut down. Right, because I remember when I interviewed Gigs, he was telling me about uh, started doing shows and shit, but like a lot got cancelled because I'm not allowed to do shows really. The police and shit. You're talking about uh, uh Project Trident. Yeah. Operation Trident. Operation Trident, sorry. <laughs> That's it, Project Trident. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool that way. Sounds like a Marvel, like a Marvel film or something. So so Operation Trident would actually shut down your shows. Yeah. The, well the police, I don't know who exactly. You know what I mean? Police are the police and So so d describe describe what Trident is exactly. It's, yeah, like it's black on black gun crime. Yeah, Trident. They're for black on black gun crime. Okay. That's what they so were. So were you were they targeting you as well? I mean, I know you're not black, but you you come yeah, from yeah, somewhat was, of a, a of black course. area. Yeah, yeah, of course. So they was targeting me too. Okay, so Trident was basically doing the same thing that they were doing to gigs. Yeah. You know, and, and recently, um I remember seeing this on, on Instagram. I guess Nines was supposed to perform at, at a big festival and then the the police stopped them from performing. Fuck no. Yeah, so so this type of shit happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, it does still. I remember Giggs was telling me how you started doing secret shows at one point. Yeah. So so describe to me how how that happened. I was just like, um, put, uh, I made the fans email, um, but they well they bought tickets, and I emailed them a, a location, but I didn't put the location of the show. I just a location and I made a coach come to that location pick up all the fans <laughs> and just bring them to the actual location so I'm never telling anyone the location that's how bad it got yeah 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 for certain man it's like that out here still 
obviously I'm one of those men, innit? Okay. So were you able to do any shows at all or were all your shows shut down? And I weren't allowed to do nothing in London. Literally. But yeah, out of London, like way out of London, cool. They they got no problems. But yeah, anything in London is a problem. So would you actually book the shows and the police would shut it down or were the promoters just knew ahead of time not to book you? Yeah, you know, it just got to a stage where promoters just started to know, innit? Like, they're booking me, show's getting shut down and before you know it, all the promoters know, like, if you book K-Coke, it's not likely your show's gonna go on, you get me, if it's in London. So I kind of had that little stigma around me for a while, you know? And the mentality is what? That if this show happens, the type of people that it'll attract will end up being violent? That's what they say, but bro, like you, you have to under, understand the extent the police go to to shut down these shows, bro. Like, I remember one time a promoter told me that the Fed said, if you let K Colt perform, we're not gonna police your event. Like, mm. it's that bad. One time, I had a birthday party, so this was after Lay Down Your Weapons has come out. My next single to come out is My Time, featuring Bridget Kelly. Yeah, I'm supposed mm. to be performing at Wireless main stage with Jay-Z, Rita Ora, it's Rock Nation Day at Wireless. I have a party, my birthday party, like two weeks before the Wireless Festival. The police tried to shut it down again. Luckily, I knew the owner of the bar who allowed us to go ahead with the party anyway. Anyway, some altercations happened outside the club. There's like a hundred riot vans. The feds have ended up battering me again outside the club done me for assault again, charged me for some violent disorder and rioting, and then banned me off wireless. So the actual chief inspector of the Metropolitan Police has messaged the man that owns Live Nation, and I have the, I have the, um, the email now still, of the chief inspector of the Metropolitan Police messaging the man that runs Live Nation and telling him we don't want K-Coke to perform. Luckily, that email allowed me to... Um, to threaten the police by suing them. Like, I'm, because they intervened on a contract. I had a contract with Live Nation. I was supposed to perform. Now, this third party has come and intervened on that contract. And they've, they've ended up making the contract um, not valid anymore. So I'd, I, I started to apply pressure legally on the police after that. Do you get what I'm saying? So you sued the police? Nah, I never sued them. I never sued them. I just threatened them. <laughs> okay, and what happens after you threaten them? Nothing. Who, who, who am I? They don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Come on. What else are the police doing to you at this time? Okay, so basically at that point you're saying there was an, there was an altercation that happened. The police ended up beating you up. Yeah. The, the, obviously the, the fight had nothing to do with me, but it's at my party. So I've, as I've gone over to see what's going on, the police are just on me straight away. I've literally got rugby tackled to the floor for no reason. But it's my birthday party. I've managed to get out and do whatever, they've ended up battering me anyway. And then obviously the outcome of that, I ended up getting charged for assault on a PC, plus a riot in charge. And then I have I ended up going to jail for that, you know, for a week. But then I got a retrial and I bust the case. Do you get me? But it was mental, man. Okay. At what point did your relationship with Rock Nation start to go south? To be fair, it was a, just a factor of a lot of things, bro. Obviously, the police are stopping me. I've got this big record label. Everybody thinks I'm doing amazing, but I'm really not. And then it's just a lot of factors, bro. Jay-Z's having these big concerts in parks in London, and I'm not there. Why, why am I not performing? Why am I not coming out? It, just, it was just odd little things. Sony as well, like, they all convinced me that Lay Down Your Weapons was the track, but I'm out here promoting it on my own. Where, where's the support? Where's the... Why do I even have this label? Do you get me? You lot got me doing things I was doing before I was even signed. Do you get what I'm saying? Furthermore, you lot are making me do things I didn't do when I was signed. It was, just, it was just a number of things. I just, I got unhappy with the situation. I think I may have been a, towards the end a little bit difficult with doing certain things. Plus the police, after they shut down the wireless and everything just kind of went sour. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So did you end up officially parting ways with Rock Nation at that point? Um, nah, it wasn't even Rock Nation at first. It was um, Sony. Sony just couldn't do it. They were just like, what can we, we don't know what to do with this guy. Do you get what I'm saying? So Sony pulled out first. And then obviously it just didn't make sense for Rock Nation no more because they got nobody over here that's going to take care of me because they're over there. 
You get me? It weren't no, it weren't no bad blood or thing. Me and Tai Tai had a conversation. He's like, listen, I got you. You got my number if you need anything. Boom, boom, boom. But business wise, it just doesn't make sense for us. No one can look after you while while you're out there. Like, and you were just one of those things. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you end up parting ways. Yeah. At one point, you said you actually started losing interest in music. Yeah, around those times, like when I'm getting troubled by the feds and they're shutting down everything and nobody can't help me, it just it just starts to become disheartening. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm putting in all this time, all this effort. Everybody thinks I'm winning and doing all these amazing things, but behind the scenes, I'm really not. And it just it started to make man unhappy. Do you know what I'm saying? So, at least in the US, when you have these artists like Tupac, who get into a lot of legal problems and are in and out of court and the police are messing with them and so forth. It seems like they end up becoming just bigger artists. Like it seems like the fans gravitate towards that. They, they end up becoming bigger, bigger than life in a way. Now, now what's it, what did you go through in terms of that? I think it, it's completely different over here still. It was completely different over here at that time. Car, without radio and without the support of certain outlets it's not really happening for artists out here in order to make money England's not big enough do you get what I'm saying like it's just it just wasn't happening like that so when when all of that's going downhill it's just it just doesn't make sense anymore because nothing's not going in and I'm just sitting here famous for no reason you feel me right you're famous but you're not rich yeah are you still living in the same area no 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 okay you move my out. family are there I go in and out when I'm ready but I'm out now so then you sort of reach a point where you just want to just quit rap altogether? So basically what, what happened was after the whole situation went sour, I was trying to figure things out on my own because I genuinely felt like I could have still done things on my own. And then I just caught another case and it, it was just like, so I was on bail for that other police thing for like a whole year. And then I caught another case, which would possibly had me facing another six. But after that, it was just like, fuck music. I've had enough. Do you get me? Like okay. Now the, the the case that you were facing six years. What was that about? Um, it was just um, some guy got hit, and he hit his head on the thing, and they tried to say it was me, and yeah, it was just a mad one. But it, it ended up being a section eighteen, which is just one below attempted murder. You get me? So yeah, but they was trying to pin that on me. But in the end, it just got NFA as well, no further action. But I was on I was on bail for the other thing for like a year. Then I had bail for that thing for like another six months or eight months or so. And then and then it just ended up frazzling out. But, but while all of that's going on, I've just got all of this hanging over my head. I just didn't feel like doing music. I just, I didn't like everything that happened. I just, it just made me a little bit sour. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I understand. So at what point did the Universal deal come together? Basically, I'm, I've got fans all over the place, in it? So I've got a couple connections in Poland. And it, it weren't really like a record deal where they're giving me mad money to go and do whatever I want to do. This is just a deal like whenever I release stuff, it goes to the right places in Poland. And that's all that was, do you get what I'm saying? Okay, and are you a big figure in Poland? Um, I'm kind of, yeah. They know me out there, of course. Yeah. But it's not just Poland, it's everywhere, bro. Like, I okay. just released no, my... Well I, mean, well, I guess you mentioned Universal Poland, so that's why yeah, I yeah, the yeah, assumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, but I'm, my, my biggest fan base is probably in Canada right now. Aha. Uh-huh. You get me? Okay. Mm. So you were able to go over there and do shows? Um, Canada? Yeah. Nah, charges. Because of... Charges. Oh, so because of your criminal charges... I can't. Right, because Canada's really big on that. Like, yeah. You can't have a felony and go to Canada. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so it's just a whole bunch of things that's that just are not, not allowing me music to related. Yeah, like I'm literally stuck. I'm stuck on this little island. I cannot perform in my own city. It's just everything's just going pear shaped, isn't it? Like it's just not happening. And it just it just disheartened, man, isn't it? I just said, fuck it, isn't it? I've had enough. Okay. I, I felt like that for a while. So at what point did you say, okay, I, I'm really gonna get back into it again? Um you know, man love music, innit? I've always loved music. Like, first and foremost, I love music. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm musically like that. I just love music. So I still dabble, I fuck around a little bit. And yeah, I just started to see what was going on. The UK started to pick up more. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying, bro, I built this. Like, I took part in this. This is 
what's going on now is is because of me as well. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I just I'm come back to take what's mine, and that was it. Bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and the reason why I even went to the UK to do the all the interviews I did was because I kind of felt like the U, the UK rap scene was starting to really grow organically for and sure. swell. For sure. And, and I, I felt like before. I felt like I'm one of the main people that made that happen. So it's only right that I'm here to reap my benefits you know, and my rewards, you know what I'm saying? Which is, uh, which is, and obviously I'm in a more comfortable place now. And uh, yeah, I'm just, you get me, just fucking in with it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and for example, on Drake's last album, it's like half the album were, you know, was UK artists. Yeah. Now, big up Drake though, man. He's coming over and showing real love, bro. Like real, like real love. You get me? It's not like he's jumping on songs with man. He's... He's 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 taking man on tour like he's showing real love. You get me? He's proper shining a light on the UK and man respect him highly for that. I mean, yeah. I mean, you look at one of the biggest you know gangster rappers out of the UK, Giggs. Yeah. Was on two songs on Drake's last album. Yeah, sick, bro. That's sick. You know, Skepta, Skepta had his own song by himself. Yeah. When you look at some of these UK artists, they'll get 20, 30 million views on YouTube. And yet they'll be completely unknown in the U.S. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. And it's yeah. not. This is not an insult to them. It just shows how the U.K. supports its own. Yeah, it's not just the U.K. though. Like I said, um, Canada. That's probably why Drake is shining a light on on the U.K. right now because Canada are really feeling the U.K. And to be fair, yeah, I believe I was one of the first artists that Canada were feeling for sure. And like, not not just to blow my own trumpet on that. I'm just. Stating facts, you get me? That's what I believe. Yeah, and yet you've never gone to Canada. Nah, I went once in 2010. And, ah, and the okay. only reason I got in is because the computers weren't working. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next time, and then they, they ended up making me pay $200. I signed a visa, gone in. And then when I thought I was good now, I, I could go to Canada now, innit? So I've gone back thinking that it's all good and that. And then bam, no, nope, computers are working this time, mate. You get me, and it just weren't happening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sent me straight back. All right, well, at least you got to go. <laughs> yeah, once. At least, at least you got to go. I once. think I'll be good now, though, still, because last time I, so that time I went, I put in for a visa, and it was like, try again in three years, and that three years is almost here now, so. So no. God willing, I'll be able to go soon. All right, so what do you got coming up next? Um, obviously, I don't know if you know, but I've dropped um, Pure Coke Volume 4. That's out right now, and it's right. It's blowing up the UK at the moment. So go and take that in, in it, and tell me what you think. Absolutely. Now, yeah. who are some of the artists you worked with on that? Um, no one major. Still, um, I just I tell a lie. I got Camouflage Genghis Khan from Toronto. I got Mayno on it. Nice. I got Mayno on it. I got a song with Jacka and Joe Blow on it. You get me? Rest in peace yeah. to Jack. And 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 everyone else is just people that I deal with on a personal level and that's it yeah yeah that's dope like all, all my all my artists is like i deal with big french real raids squingy um joe black just the people that i function with are they're all the ones that are on my tape aside from the names that i mentioned you get me yeah yeah now if you were to give a message you know with everything you've been through to get to this point yeah when you look at all, all the people who are looking at this, you know, who are aspiring to be rappers, who come up in a, in a similar kind of situation, grow up in similar types of neighborhoods. Yeah. What advice would you give them as they're preparing to kind of enter this? I don't even know, bro. Just keep going, man. If, if it's something you love to do and you're, you're really good at it, just keep going, man. No matter what hurdles come across, just keep jumping, bro. Just keep going. You get me? Don't watch nobody else. Just keep going. That's my only advice. Yeah. That's yeah. great advice, man. Appreciate it. Okay, Coke, definitely a pleasure to finally speak with Likewise, you, Likewise, my brother. Congrats on everything. Likewise, my brother, man. You know, congrats on sticking with it because, you know, it, it was, there, there's probably a lot of people from the same era that you started with that you have you know, you haven't heard it from in a very long time. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's not a lot of people from my era right now that are still here doing the thing, apart from gigs, you get me, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, absolutely, man. Congratulations on everything. I appreciate know, that. Make sure you go and check out that Pure Coat. Make sure you go and check out that Pure Coat Volume 4. It's doing craziness out here right now. I'm surprised you ain't even heard yet. <laughs> I only man, dropped, I dropped it a couple it days ago, but it's 
it's I've got I'm just mashing up the UK right now. Check it Congrats, out, bro. Man. Congrats. Well deserved. Respect, my brother. My man.